when I was young, I went to church and uh, the preacher was preaching and somebody was translating into my own language. And when they prayed, when they got to the prayer part, nobody translated. People just waited in the end and they said, Amen. And I was really perturbed by that because I, you know, I thought that why didn't they translate the prayer? Because I, you know, on the way I'm asking my mom, like, why didn't they translate? My mom's like, everybody knows that, you know, where the prayer ends and you just say amen. But I'm like, but God did not understand. I mean, I thought that God only understood my language when I got to figure out that, um, they, you know, God does understand all languages. I wanted to find out why, where the languages came from. Jina langu ni mokai wa siri, mimi ni mwalimu wa Kiswahili katika chuo kikuu cha Oregon. Um, nime kudia katika chuo kikuu cha Oregon tangu mwaka wa elfu mili na kuminambili kwa hivyo kwa sasa. Sa hivi ni na miaka mine hapa inendelea, inendelea kufundisha na kutangamana na watu katika chuo kikuu cha Oregon na katika mji wa Eugene hapa Oregon. Uh, my name is Mukai Busiri, I'm a Swahili teacher at the Department of Linguistics. I've been at the University of Oregon since 2012. I, my training is in linguistics and I grew up in Kenya so we, as, as a Kenyan, you speak two or three languages by default because um, as soon as you get out of your mom's house, you, you meet a different language and, and as kids we, we pick them up. If I'm in the US and I'm speaking French or Swahili, what does that buy me or what does it not give me as, 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 a, as, as a person um, and in terms of identity and stuff? Um, and that led me to sociolinguistics and, and to go back to looking at our own experiences in East Africa and see what speaking Swahili and how Swahili came about and, 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 and what the status of Swahili is. And so when I got a chance um, to, when I saw the, that, that there's a position for a Swahili teacher in Oregon, I jumped at it. So the, just the fact um, of teaching somebody my language is also like being an advocate for my culture because it, 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 I, I think you, wouldn't, you couldn't teach language or you couldn't talk about some things in your own language without actually bringing the culture in it. And so that was, that was, that was a selling point for me. But we get different types of students come in. Um, they come in because they of the career interest. They might want to uh, work in Africa at some point, or in East Africa, or just for the heck of it. They, they're curious about a different language and they want to know it. Um, but the, we also have graduate students who are doing the research in East Africa and they need this as a field language. And, and so we, we have had those. I was surprised, I mean, coming to the U.S., the, the, the picture that we have of the U.S. is the U.S. is the best everything, or it has all these things. And, and so when, I think for Kenyans, we are surprised when we came to the U.S. and find that only one language is spoken, and that people, a lot of people do not speak any other language and get, um, get surprised that you can speak all these languages. But um, for me, it's an experience that I tell, let me, I mean, I mean it, it lets me explain to my students that picking up another language is very easy. Uh, because we picked these languages up without even thinking about it. In fact, having um, three languages um, by the time I hit high school, I was still trying to learn more. <laughs>